you miss my phone. Where am I? Well, now that you've got your braces on, I want to see those frilly ones. Your sweater is hand knit. It's lovely. Over 12,000 stitches in just under 632 miles. From Zion, Pennsylvania to Shreveport, Louisiana. That's how long it took Grandma to knit. You counted the stitches? Oh, that was a math assignment. She can do a beanie in 200 miles flat. Wow. <laughs> the harder you work on your studies, now the more options you'll have in life. You've done okay without going to college. Look on the other side, we need a 12 by 20 piece. You can make furniture, fix just about anything. Well, we're not talking about me. And what happened the last week? You were gung-ho about college. What's four years of college going to do for me if I decide to be a musician? I hope you write really smart music. It has to be on the other side. How do you know? Because everything around here is looking but old junk. Excuse me, we're looking for the used computer game booths? By the front doors. There's a man up there with an information map. Right now it is, but it can be yours for forty dollars. Well, why selling it? Because that's what I do. I make these display boxes and then I sell it. I meant the Purple Heart. Is that what that is? Yeah, George Washington made it up in 1782. He called it the Badge of Military Merit. Did you make that up? No, I had one of my own once. The Battle of Bull Run? Vietnam. My dad got it. So, how much for the Purple Heart without the box? It goes with the box. Ten bucks. I got three bucks. Good for you. Now all you need is another seven. Don't sell it to anybody else till I find my Uncle Russell. How'd your dad die in Vietnam? Did he get blown up? He didn't die. He just got wounded. He's got this metal plate in his head. If he's still alive, where is he? And how come you live with your aunt and uncle? My dad's in prison. No way. What'd he do? Rob a bank? He was driving. In prison for driving? Man, he must be going really fast. Well, there was an accident. A man and his son died. It's my dad's fault. Uncle Russell? I need a favor. What did I tell you when we got here this morning? Not to hit you up for money. So this favor of yours doesn't have anything to do with a purchase that you can't afford. But this is really important. Video games aren't important to me. They never will be. It's for some junky metal. Purple hearts aren't junky. A veteran has a booth here selling his medals? He makes boxes. He doesn't even know what Purple Hearts mean to guys like us. All I need is seven more bucks. I'll pay you back every cent, I promise. numbers all day. It's kind of how accountants do it year in and year out. <laughs> what are the numbers made out of? I mean, when you crunch them. <laughs> well, Daniel, that's an expression, crunching numbers. It means working with numbers, adding and subtracting. I would hate that job. So would I. Crackers. Well, oh, honey, you don't have to wait on me now, don't you? Yes, I do. You're a big breadwinner these days. 
Why are you working for an accountant anyway? Because she has options. She can do dozens of jobs. That little sarcasm aimed in my direction. No sarcasm. I listen to every word you say. We had a college talk today. Nathaniel, the reason I am working for accountants is because we're trying to save as much money as we can until the baby comes. And because accountants pay their bookkeepers a lot more than schools pay their teachers. That's a crime. Teachers ought to be paid the very most. I agree. But the value people place on things doesn't always make sense. I like your purple heart here. This thing is worth a lot more than the ten dollars we paid for it. Not to that idiot. No. But to Edward Brogan. He spilled his blood for his country. And so did you. What are you going to do with that medal, Nathaniel? You going to put it in a special place like you did for your dad? No. I was thinking I could ask the flea market guy where he got it from. And if you knew? Well, maybe there's a little boy like me out there that would like it to help remember his dad. Oh, Nathaniel, you gave me a chill. That's a lovely thought. See, Mama, you rub off on all of us, eventually. Well, so can we? Well, maybe next week. Tomorrow's reserved for job, honey. Okay. Where are you going? Need to stretch my legs. Now? Uh-huh. He's trying to talk me into going tomorrow. No, I don't talk to Uncle Jesse. He does exactly what he wants. That's right. And right now, I want to join you on your walk. I was hoping you would. Hmm. What are you smiling at? Nothing. He's showing off my new teeth. And dribbling water on the floor. Why would I want you to do that? Because you're not working and you're feeling bad about it. No, I'm not. Russell Green, I know when you're upset. I can read every line on your forehead, every blink of your eye. <laughs> what am I saying? Now, you know I don't read Morse code. Huh. The job will come. It always does. I've never heard that before. They're your words, and I live by them. After the holidays, it's always slow. Winter is always slow. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy the children. You are the hardest working man I know. Tell that to the nest egg. Oh, my sweetheart. You provide this family with the fuel it needs. It begins with love, and it ends with love, and everything in between is just stuff. You're going shopping again? We're not shopping. We're looking for Edward Brogan's son. Who's that? The guy that got the medal? We're looking for his kid. Yeah. Can you even take a second cousin twice removed? Hi, Josh. Hi, Mr. Green. Morning, Billy. Mr. Green? Yeah. Can Nathaniel sleep over at my house sometime? Yeah, I guess so. It's okay with you folks. Cool. Listen, the skating rink's on the way to the flea market. You want to ride? Sure. Things I use to display in boxes, they come from all over. All over what? The state? City? Downtown Paris? Around. I don't travel much. All right, what about the name? A two dozen Brogans in the phone book, no Edward. Can you help us narrow that down? I don't know any Brogans. 
Edward or otherwise. I'm not very good at keeping records, except for my lacquers and my wood supplies. Oh, this is the box of Trump apartment. Where do you get all this magic stuff to display in your boxes? From a magician. Andrew the Briggs. Why don't you check into his shop? Why don't you talk to his wife, Connie? I pick up plenty of junk from her. A purple heart is his junk. No offense, man, kid. Wait, here's the address. Four, three, two, Blanchard Drive. That's where they are. Let's start off with the green handkerchief trick. A green hanky, you can tell it's green by the color. I want you all to say the magic words. Andrew the Brick. Andrew the Brick. And we have from nowhere a beautiful doll. Isn't he beautiful? Yeah. Oh, hello. Hi. Is there something I can help you with? Are you Connie? Yes, I am. Oh, hi. I'm Russ O'Green. Bert over at the uh, flea market told me that you might know something about this. Well, looks like that thing has a life all its own. <laughs> yeah, well, I thought it was a mistake. My nephew, the one with red hair, is going to be very pleased with himself. I don't want it. You don't want it? Correct. I don't like looking at it. My maiden name is Brogan. This was your brother? No. It was my father's. One pom with a short string. Now, if you take the, um, the, um, the yellow pom-pom and uh, you, you pull it, it uh, the blue and the yellow, and... Ma'am, are you telling me that there is not one shred of value to you for a metal that your daddy spilled his blood for? None. Well, what about somebody else in your family, somebody who might appreciate the contribution of a soldier? Well, we're staying at the Collinwood Trailer Park if you have a... Having a conscience in the middle of the night. Well, I'm sorry for your wasted time, Mr. Green. I certainly give you an A for effort. Pump, pump, trick. Mr. Green? Yeah? Andrew Petrie from the Magic Store. You were talking with my wife, Connie. Oh, yeah, come on in on the call. Uh, this is my wife, Claire. Hi. And my mother, Hattie. This is Josh and Dinah. And the little redhead here is, uh... That's the magician I was telling you about. She's awesome. Well, thank you. Uh, my wife's brother's address. Oh, good. I'm glad she changed her mind. Her brother should have the medal. Uh, that's not it. Uh, Connie doesn't know I'm here. Anyway, you can stick the purple heart in the mail or uh, take it to him yourself. Nathaniel, give him the medal. You can stick it in the mail yourself and leave us out of it all together. I understand. I just thought, since you've gone to all this trouble, you, you might want to give it to Ed yourself. Ed? Ed Brogan? Yeah. Oh, it's a uh, father-daughter thing. And I just went into budget an inch. Father-daughter? Well, your wife was talking. I assumed he was dead. Tonight, the children of Ronald McDonald House and an amazing little dog prove that the miracle of hope can heal. You must see It's a Miracle, tonight on PAX Feel Good TV. I can't find it. What? I promised that we killed Jer- Okay, 
your dad. This is uh, Mr. Green and his nephew, Nathaniel. Are you a bill collector? No. You work for the county? Some kind of low-down inspector looking to bust me for working at home without a city license? No. Good. I guess I won't have to shoot you then. I have something for you. What, are you so cheap, Nick, you couldn't spring for a couple of boxes of Boy Scout cookies? Girl Scouts sell cookies first. I'm here to give you this. It's your Purple Heart. Where'd you get it? Swap me. What did you know about this? No, I didn't even talk to her. Uh, your daughter gave some stuff away. The metal must have gotten in there by accident. Accident, huh? Girl's a witch. She got out of my will years ago. What's a, what's a boy your age give two beans about a metal? Well, my Uncle Russell has one, and so does my dad. First cab. SEAL Team One. My brother was aboard the Hancock. My dad's got a metal plate in his head, and my Uncle Russell, he was crawling on his stomach. Uh, Nathaniel, why don't you just give the medal to Mr. Brogan so we can leave, let him get back to work. You want me to pin it on you? No. I'd rather have a box of Boy Scout cookies. You keep it. Me, but why? I thought you'd be happy to give it back. Why do I need ribbon and gold plate for reminders? These are the medals I carry around with me every day. Give me my legs. Swap me. He called her a witch. Sounds like Mr. Brogan is in a whole lot of pain. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Honey, everyone deals with tragedy their own way. Some people make the best of it and get on with their lives. Others, well, others hold on to it. Visit it every day. Well, I guess having no legs is worse than a metal plate like that. I agree. You didn't have to be such a jerk about it. No argument there. Hey, dude. Hey, Josh. Are we going? Um, sure. If it's okay with you. Go ahead, ask him. Well, I told Billy about Andrew the Magician. And we wanted to go see a show tomorrow. Ah, uh, I don't know if I want you going back over there. Why not? Oh, uh, those people, Nathaniel, they, uh... Well, they don't give family bonding a good name. What's that have to do with a magic show? Nothing. I guess it's okay. Yeah, all right. Do you want to say what? Sure. Well, I'm gonna go get Mama's yarn store. You want to take a ride? Mm, yeah. You buy me some hot chocolate? Uh -huh. There you go. That Andrew the Magician guy is pretty awesome. And he did this one trick where he made the two cards switch envelopes. It's not magic, it's called sleight of hand. Dinah, I saw it with my own eyes. The cards switched after the envelopes were sealed. Nathaniel, cards don't have feet. You guys are looking in the wrong places. Who invited you anyway? I don't want to go. Hey, we all walked out then. Okay, boys and girls, let's see where we have up here on stage. Shall we? What's your name? Nathaniel. Say hi, Nathaniel. Hi, Nathaniel. And what's your name? Billy. Say hi, Billy. Hi, Billy. 
Okay, kids, now what I need you to do is to examine these envelopes. Make sure there's nothing special about them. No trap doors, wires, wax, or women. If there's any women, let me know. <laughs> now, we're going to do something strange and mystic. I'm strange, and that was mystic. <laughs> <laughs> Moving along with the speed of a booty turn. A regular deck of 98 cards. You know what we call this? No. Showing off. <laughs> now, do you want to shuffle these cards and ruin everything, or you can trust me? What do you want to do? I'll trust you. Good, I'll put you back. Thank you. I'm going to go through the deck now, Billy, and I want you to tell me to stop dribbling. Stop dribbling. Thanks. Thanks very much. Let's have a look at the cards you stopped there. What is that card? The ace of spades. Tell everyone. The ace of spades. Now, take the ace and put it inside the envelope. Seal it up. Lick it. Seal it. Make sure I can't come anywhere near that ace. Okay? What is this card over here, Billy? The king of diamonds. Say loud to the audience. King of diamonds. King of diamonds. Take the king of diamonds. Seal it inside the envelope. Make sure I can't get anywhere near that king of diamonds. Now, here's the idea of the trick, kids. When I wave my magic wand, both these cards are going to change places. Think I can do it? Yeah! Well, thank you. Let's have a go. I want you all to shout out the magic words. Andrew the Brit. And the cards change places. Oh, yeah. Rip open the envelope. Now, remember, Nathaniel had the eight. Show everybody what you got, Nathaniel. Oh. The king of diamonds. Rip open the envelope over here. Now remember that Billy has a king, and now Billy is holding Nathaniel's ace. Oh. <laughs> that's, that's the end of the show. See you next week, okay? Bye. Thanks for your help, boys. You gotta tell me how you did it, please. Nathaniel, I can't. It's the magician's code. We never divulge our secrets. And what'll happen if you do? I go out of business. Nathaniel. Nathaniel, did you see my father-in-law? Yeah. Well, how did it go? Not so good. How does what go? <laughs> no, I hate it when you sneak up on me like that. It's like a cat. Well, I only do it when you're keeping secrets from me. If I was you, I wouldn't talk to him either. Him? Your dad. He's mean. Why did you do it? Because it was time. Time for what? If I want my father dead... Connie. Well? Did you give his heart back to him? He didn't take it. He thinks you're a witch. Mom, I can't go without Miss Daniel. We're going. But you said it was okay. That was before you told me about him. Now let's go. Hey! Wait for me. Nathaniel, you aren't coming with us. Why? What I do wrong? And stay away from Billy. I don't want you playing with him anymore. So what's going on? Nothing that concerns you. Nathaniel's my cousin. So what did he do wrong? What? Tell me. His father is a murderer. It's as simple as that. I don't want my son exposed. My uncle didn't kill those people on purpose. Is his father in prison? Did two people die? It was an accident. Card, any card. Come on, don't let me influence your choice. Nothing. I gotta go. Hey, don't you have time to learn just one card? Well, what about divulging your secrets? Well, um, every magician is allowed one magician in training under the age of 14. It's rule number 38 in the code book, if you're interested. Go for it. I'll hang around for a little while. Okay. Yeah. Great. Okay. Pick a card. Okay. So pick a card, any card? <laughs> Show it to everyone and remember. Okay. Put it right there. Right right there. Banner, the audience does not get to ask questions of the magician. So, Grandma cut the deck three times? Hmm.
Is this your car? That's Whoa. it. That was terrific. Have you shown Mr. Billy yet? Yeah, he's going to flip out when he sees that. Well, I want to perfect it first. Oh, I think it's pretty perfect right now. The ace of spades is on the bottom. It was right next to the four. No, it wasn't. Yeah, it was. You looked at the bottom card. Here, give me the deck. I'll show you how you did it. Forget it. Oh, well, just leave him alone. Gosh, it's your problem. I didn't mean anything by it. All right, y'all. That's enough. Time to go to bed. Who's got first dibs on the bathroom? Me. No, Ma. Oh, I guess you have it perfect. <laughs> How's everything going? Might have been better. Good. Um, found this in the back of a Suburban. What was it doing there? You better find some place safe to hide it before it gets lost. Okay. She had no right to treat him like that. Well, you know, Sonny, it's just probably just some mother trying to protect her child. From what? She doesn't know Nathaniel or what kind of boy he is. I know. People hear words like murder and prison. They think he's catching. They run. Yeah, they do. You know, Mama, until now, Nathaniel's always thought Joe was a hero. And that medals for valor, purple hearts, meant something. We're gonna have to do something. We're gonna have to do it fast. Nathaniel. Come on, gotta go. Can I just stay a little longer? We gotta get over to Aunt Claire's office. Why can't I stay here? Because I got a surprise for you. Oh, I like surprises. Well, then come on, let's go. See you, Andrew. 
He's making excellent progress. Mm -hmm. So is the supplies man quite a dog? Sort of. Is it a dog? Please say it's a dog. I ever tell you you are an incredibly impatient young man? All the time. Mm. We're here to see Claire Green. She's expecting us. Now, you count to 300, One, two, three, but four, five, count six. slowly and in your head. Come on back. <laughs> so this is what Clark is all about, huh? Uh-huh. Hello. I have an appointment to speak with 1305 at 2 o'clock. Yes, sir, I'll hold. Uncle Russell, I'm getting close to 300. <laughs> Hello there. How you doing? It's good to hear your voice, too. Yep, he's right here. Hang on. Okay, buddy, this is it. That's my surprise. I get to talk on the phone. You bet. Say hello to your daddy. Nathaniel, I'm not kidding around. He's really on the phone. I don't care. I don't want to talk to him. I hate him. I wish he was dead. Joe, uh, no, it's me. We got a problem. Country crock plus calcium and vitamins could the Nathaniel's in the back with Andrew. Is everything okay? He was upset when he came in. Did he tell you what happened? No. I'll take you to him. Uh, can we talk to you for a minute? Sure. I overheard Nathaniel talking with his buddies, and he told them that his father was dead. Only his father's very much alive. So I gather. You saw what happened the other day with the mother of Nathaniel's friend? Yes. I felt horrible about it. He's such a sweet kid. It's a shame that he's suffering so because of his father. Like you? I'm surviving quite nicely, Mr. Green. Now, my relationship with my father has nothing to do with you. Well, you're right about me. Unfortunately, it does have a big impact on my nephew. It all started with a purple heart that you threw away. I didn't ask him to find it. I certainly didn't ask for it to be returned. Did you ever say thank you? Thank you? <laughs> to whom? To your father. For what? <laughs> for, for not being good enough for him? For not obeying his every word? for wanting to have a life of my own. What? What should I thank him for? For serving his country with his life, his body. Oh, don't tell me you're one of the true diehards who believe in the Vietnam War. No. No, ma'am. Not the war. Not even in the politics of it. I did believe in doing my duty. I still think that's right about that. I believe in all of that, too. Life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness. It's why I don't speak to my father anymore. We don't see things the same. We haven't for years. You know, when I was a little girl, I prayed to God every night that he would give my daddy back his legs. Then he'd love me more. God didn't listen. Maybe you were praying for the wrong thing. I know in my life, all the bad that happened to me when I was a little girl became magnified over the years. There was a stretch near where I didn't talk to or see my father. And it got to the point where I couldn't remember one good thing about him. But there were good things. So you see, we want Nathaniel to remember the good things. 
We want him to pray for guidance and understanding. out in front of me. All right, very good. Now, ask me to pick a card, which I do. And you ask me to show everybody in the audience and remember it. And then you have to put it back in the deck, which we do. And then you shuffle the cards one more time. And then you, uh, you hold the cards out to the audience. And you, um, well, i tell you what. <sighs> Let's wait till later. We don't want to spoil the surprise. Okay. I was going to come home. Good. We thought you might want a ride. It's pretty cold outside. Thanks. Oh, you keep your deck. And don't forget to practice. I won't. Huh. Is he mad? We'll arrange another call. I don't know why I did it. Just remember your daddy loves you. And then he worries about you. You know, we always tell him that we know what we're doing. But I sometimes wonder if that's really true. You do know, Uncle Russell. You do know. Hardly thinking, Uncle. I'm thinking very hard. Oh. Oh. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. You gonna tell me how I did that one? No. Why not? Because I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Nathaniel, don't ever tell her how you did that. <laughs> Thank you. For what? For being so generous with your cousin. Well, letting him succeed with the trick. Grandma, I didn't let him succeed. I don't know how he did it. Nice work. Thank you. Uh, fine, the name of the place. Yeah. I remember. Yeah, I like some time.